fellowship. In Acts 2.42, we read that one of the four things the early church devoted itself to was fellowship. Fellowship was a very important part of their reason for meeting together. It was one of their objectives. But what is fellowship? We often hear people talking about fellowship. We hear it said that what we need more is fellowship. But our modern ideas of fellowship have become so watered down that the word no longer carries the same meaning it did in the New Testament times. We are not surprised that the early church devoted itself to the apostles' teachings and also to prayer. Apart from the ministry of the Holy Spirit, these are the two most important means of growth, power, and effectiveness in the Christian's life. And this is evident everywhere in the rest of Scripture. But Luke tells us these early Christians also devoted themselves to fellowship. This just didn't, they didn't just have fellowship. They devoted themselves to it. This means that fellowship was a priority in, in, in one of the objectives for gathering together. They made fellowship a priority. Today, however, we often view fellowship as what we do in a fellowship hall. It's a place where we have casual conversation and drink coffee and eat donuts or, or have a meal. This is not bad and can, and can contribute to fellowship, but it falls for, far short of fellowship according to biblical standards and according to the meaning and use of the Greek word for fellowship. Still, others who may have become fed up with church seek fellowship through viewing a worship service on TV. But this too misses the picture and misses the mark by a long shot. So there are three keys, key ideas that come out of this. One, fellowship means being a part of a group, a body of people. It is opposed to isolation, solitude, and loneliness, and a present-day independent kind of individualism. Of course, it does not stop there because we can be in a crowd of people and even share certain things in common, but still not have fellowship. Two, fellowship means having or sharing with others certain things in common, such as interest, goals, feelings, beliefs, activities, all that kind of stuff. Three, Fellowship can mean a partnership that involves working together and caring, caring for one another as a company of people, like a company of soldiers or members of a family. But what about Christian fellowship? According to the Word of God, the words for fellowship as they are used in the New Testament? The Bible makes it clear that our fellowship in Christ should lead to unity. The fact that we share in Christ is the most important thing about us this friendship, this relationship. It is a bond that we need to continually take to heart and practice. The partaking of communion is an example. Although it is symbolic, a symbolic de demonstration of community, we practice communion, which is another word for fellowship, so that we can remember Christ together as a family. See, so God created the perfect organization for fellowship, and that is the family. None of us has the perfect family, but the family unit is intended by, by God to provide us with daily fellowship so we can learn to develop deep, loving relationships and learn how to sacrifice for others. For those that belong to Christ, family extends beyond the blood that runs through our veins. It is a blood that Jesus shed for us on the cross that makes us a family. We have a whole host of siblings that we don't even know, and that's okay. God has given us special family members in which to have fellowship with. A commitment to Christ is a commitment to Christ's body. When we make a commitment to Christ, we make a commitment to his purpose in the world, which is to have a healthy, unified body, which is the people of God. We have been called to love what Jesus, what Jesus loves. We have no choice but to love the whole church. Even denominations whose beliefs we may not agree with are those parts we don't understand. We also have been called to community. Again, another word for fellowship, where we help each other, where we utilize our gifts, our resources, and our problems. In the early church, they met in homes. They ate together. They cared for each other's needs. They lived out Galatians 6-2 by carrying each other's burdens. Because of the closeness of their relationship, there was no slander or gossip. They literally tamed their tongues. 
there was no talking negatively about others or talking about each other. It is so unlike the church today where gossip is part of most conversations. So why is fellowship so important? One, it brings glory to God. Fellowship is actually part of God's creation. We are made in His image. We are to reflect His character by having a relationship with Him and others. Fellowship is not optional. From the very beginning, God said it wasn't good for man to be alone. While this statement is as prelude to the declaration of marriage, it nonetheless indicates man's need for community. Fellowship is one of God's principal purposes for human beings. That is why we all feel the need for companionship, for love, and a sense of belonging. We are social beings. We are not meant to walk this walk alone. Each of us together shows all of God's graces to the world. Not one of us is perfect. We all sin. But each of us has a purpose here on earth to show aspects of God to those around us. Each of us has been given specific spiritual gifts. When we come together in fellowship, it is like us as a whole demonstrating who God is. All of us together show the glory of God, too. We need each other. We live in a world that is hostile to God. The life of faith requires perseverance. We are to encourage others to run the race well. We are to encourage others to not fall away from Christ. We are to experience help in needs of weak, times of weaknesses. And is this kind of relationship easy? No. More than likely not. These kinds of relationships can be extremely difficult. It's important to have a prayer partner, one you can trust, one where you hold each other accountable, one you can call at any given time. Fellowship makes us stronger. No matter where we are in our faith, fellowship provides us with strength. Being around other believers gives us a chance to learn and grow in our faith. Evangelizing to a cold-hearted world can take a toll on a believer. It can cause us to question our beliefs. So not only does fellowship make us stronger, it provides encouragement when we are struggling. We have all had times when we don't feel like we are making any headway. Pretty soon we are feeling down, which can lead to anger and leaves us disillusioned with God. It's during these times believers can come along beside us and lift us up. They can help us stay focused on God and encourage us to move forward. So what, what does fellowship look like? Fellowship is about attitude and action. We are one body that has been called to spur one another on, to love one another, to be one with each other and the Lord. This is the kind of mentality we need. We also need to act on it. We need to actively love one another. We need to actively encourage each other. This requires us to be intentional because we already know fellowship isn't going to be easy. It takes perseverance because loving one another can be very hard. It takes conviction because the Lord commanded it. Romans 12, verses 9 through 13. Let love be genuine. Abhor what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not be slothful in zeal. Be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. See, there are five ways in which fellowship expresses itself. One, fellowship is expressed in thanksgiving. Philippians 1.3 Paul thanked the Christians in Philippi. We are to be thankful for all of God's people. Being thankful saves us from having the wrong attitude, whether it be irritation, resentful, resentment, or jealousy. Two, fellowship is expressed in prayer. Philippians 1.4 It is a privilege to be able to pray for one another. You know, praying for each other purifies the atmosphere of the church. Look at verses 9 through 11. It says, And it is my prayer that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment, so that you may approve what is excellent and so be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ, to the glory and praise of God. Could you imagine how things would be if we prayed for each other like this? Three. 
fellowship is expressed in faith. Verse 6 tells us Paul had faith, confident in these Christians, and in God's purpose for him, for them, and what God was yet to do for them. For fellowship is expressed in love. Verse 7 and 8, Paul said he had them in his heart, not simply in his head or on his lips. He longed for them. 5. Fellowship is expressed in ministry. Our ministry is to advance the gospel. In verse 12, there are two ways to advance the gospel. First, by life, the way we live, and the second, by lips. The words we say, whether it be our testimony, our praises, our love. When we live this kind of life constantly, consistently, we advance the kingdom by what we are and who we are. Fellowship helps us grow. Coming together is a great way for each of us to grow in faith. Reading our Bibles and praying are awesome ways to get closer to God, but each of us has had important lessons to impart to one another. When we come together in fellowship, we teach each other things. God has given us the gift of learning and growing, and we are able to show each other how to live as God desires us to live and how to walk in His footsteps. So what are the beliefs of fellowship? What are the benefits of fellowship? You know, fellowship helps us to live godly lives and to share the gospel throughout the world. It helps us with things like trust, hope, a sense of belonging, security, lifelong friendships, faith, patience, selflessness, and most of all, unconditional love. This can only come from people who have a personal relationship with God. Fellowship crosses racial, cultural, gender, and other artificial boundaries to find its basis in Christ alone. Now, we need to be honest. The church today is made up of such a widely diverse population that unity and fellowship are, are challenging at best. We are diverse in terms of gender, age, race, status, musical taste, light leadership styles, giftedness. I mean, that list goes on and on. This diversity could become a barrier to fellowship. In Ephesians 2, Paul tells us how such barriers can be broken. And Paul said the biggest barrier was between Jews and Gentiles. Verses 13 and 14 in Ephesians 2. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made us both one and has broken down in his flesh the dividing walls of hostility. See, Jesus knocked down the barriers that we keep trying to build back up. And Ephesians 4 tells us to walk in a manner worthy of our calling. Ephesians 4, 2b through 6 says, To accept one another in love, diligently keeping the unity of the Spirit with the peace that binds us. Paul follows up with the sevenfold unity that believers have in Christ. There is one body and one Spirit, just as we are called to one hope at your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. Paul tells us in Philippians 2, verses 1 through 5, what our attitude must be in order to obtain this kind of fellowship. Could you imagine the impact we as a body of Christ could have in this world and on this world? This world that is destroying itself, the only thing that can change the hearts and minds of the people believers and unbelievers, is the Holy Spirit as he applies scripture to the hearts and minds of his people. Since our source of our Christian life and service is God himself, we need to first learn how to fellowship with him. The prayer of fellowship enables us to be filled with God and to let God flow out of us. We need to allow God to saturate our minds, our emotions, and our will within himself. This prayer allows God to expose and deal with our weaknesses, our mistakes, and our shortcomings. We need to fellowship regularly with the Lord, learn to live in fellowship with Him. We need to set aside some special time to seek a deeper fellowship with the Lord. I call this time basking in His presence. It's in this time that we recognize what God feels like and why His voice sounds like to us individually. It's learning to recognize when He is embracing you. It's not about giving to Him. It's asking giving going to him and just asking but just sitting there at his feet and receiving what he has for you 
This time is a set time every day, with no interruptions. Go to your place and wait with the expectation of him revealing himself to you. And he will reveal himself. You just need to be still, be quiet, and listen. It is in our fellowship with God that enables us to have fellowship with other believers. A large part of fellowship is spending time with community of like-minded believers. God designed his church to be a fellowship, not just a community, but a family of brothers and sisters who share God, God ideals and beliefs. Ephesians 2, 19-22, So now you Gentiles are no longer strangers or foreigners. You are citizens along with all of God's holy people. You are members of God's family. Together we are his house, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. And the cornerstone is Christ Jesus himself. We are carefully joined together in him, becoming a holy temple for the Lord. Through him, you Gentiles are also being made a part of this dwelling where God lives in the Spirit. This family helps us to improve ourselves, as Proverbs 7, 27, 17 states, As iron sharpens iron, so a friend sharpens a friend. In the early church, there was a relationship between the heart towards God and the generosity towards each other. So close that these relationships that the early church didn't see themselves as individuals, but as members of one, one another and community. They thought of themselves as one. They couldn't see where one person began and one ended. This is the message we heard from Jesus and now declares to you. God is light and there is no darkness in him at all. So we are lying if we say we have fellowship with God but go on living in spiritual darkness. We are not practicing the truth. But if we are living in the light as God is in the light, practicing the truth, Mm. Then we have fellowship with each other, and the blood of Jesus, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. If we claim we have no sin, we are only fooling ourselves and not living in the truth. But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all, all wickedness. If we claim we have not sinned, we are calling God a liar and showing that this world word has no place in our hearts, as in 1 John 1, through 1 verses 5-10. through 10. Papa, how good it is when brothers and sisters in Christ live and grow together in union with each other and in love with you, Lord Jesus. I thank you for every one of my brothers and sisters and the friendships that have developed between us. May we individually and collectively be filled day by day with the knowledge of you, and may we all grow together in love and be filled with all your spiritual, spiritual wisdom and understanding so that together we may walk in love in the Lord and live godly in Jesus. Keep us from all foolish arguments and bitterness, which can be often destroy the gracious fellowship that you desire for all your children to have. Bind us together in love by the power of your Holy Spirit and give us, give each one of us gifts and graces that are needed as you see fit, so that together we may minister to each other as we, we unite together to worship you. Papa, I thank you for your wonderful for the wonderful friends that you have brought into my life. Each one is so precious to you, and each one who has brought such joy and encouragement into my life. I thank you for the gifts, the talents that each has been endowed with, and the way that each one has brought something new and unique into my life. I ask your special blessing upon each one, and I pray that together we may grow in grace and in knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ as we fellowship together with your word and encourage each other in the trials and difficulties that we face at this time. Breathe your love and grace into our hearts of each one and draw us closer to you and help us to maintain the uni unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.